Okay, today we're going to show you a new site that's been found. Well, it's not new at all. The dig's been going on for years. But it shows you um, that here in Texas, we have some prehistoric sites that predate the Indians or Amer Indians that are said to have come down through here. And in fact, this predates Clovis by a new and different people that we're not really that sure of who they actually are. Now where we're going to go to here is uh, Central Texas and so we can look kind of where we're coming in at here and pulling down onto the site itself and you can see that it's got an area that's cleared out here on somewhat of a higher ground area. Uh, it's not too far from a creek and you can see how this actually kind of looks that they're currently digging at uh, here. Um, it's not yeah, there's a person standing here so this is uh not that huge of a site well this is one of many of the little sites they're finding around here whenever you find an archaeological site like this quite often uh to one side or another you're going to find bone piles and refuge and things like that from the living areas the living areas might be somewhat clean and you'll find fires and you'll find diaspora that are out away from that and uh, these people were smart enough that they have two piles. One is a uh, piles of like flinting and things like that and churning. And it seems to be on the northeast side. And then the southwest uh, has the uh, bones and things that are on it. Uh, leading for the uh, perhaps smell of all the decay of the garbage to not be in the prevailing wind. How quaint. But uh, let's look at the site a little bit better here. Um, it's got quite a bit of uh, Clovis material that came out of it from a long, long time ago. Uh, for the last few hundred years, they've been working on this. And uh, it's out here. There are quarries near here and other things. And it's just lucky that it never got hit really that bad. So here's the new article that's come out here, and uh, it's showing you that they found at Galt Archaeological Site here in Central Texas. Um, again, it's a little south of Waco, uh, a little north of Austin. Uh, a little more north of Austin is a town called Georgetown. If anybody's been through here, knows about it also. It's a little north of that, and in between those, and uh, like the Fort Hood and Colleen areas. Um, so, anyhow. Uh, that area is also known to be right at an escarpment. At one time, the ocean came all the way up till near uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area uh, here, and it was a shallow sea all across uh, central and south Texas. And indeed, there's limestone formations and a few ripples that we see through there, especially near Gulfweight and places as you can see that ancient coral formations had formed. And this was, as it receded and came out, this seems to be one of the places that was somewhat near the edge of the ocean now far far away from that but um so they're dating this site to be at between 16 and 20 thousand years old and uh so it's being published in the journal of science advances i don't have a subscription to that i don't know if there's a way for it to come out here but there's enough information here to go on really um this seems to be a, a where humans occupied north america continent prior to the clovis people which were a pre-people to the Indians even. So now we're looking at uh, somebody that's somewhat primordial. All of these type things here are all utensils um, and uh, sharpened points, flint, uh, carving and cutting pieces they had found from them, and uh, a lot of projectile points and blades and flake tools that they find in there. For decades, scientists believed that the Western Hemisphere was settled by humans roughly at about... 13 and a half thousand years ago or 10,500 BC. Now this would have been uh, right after the uh, uh, asteroid event that happened right around there that uh, pretty much wiped out North America it looks like and especially the northern part of it up into Canada and eroded away the uh, um, continental ice shelf that was there still um, and did it so rapidly that that melt off running down through the continent here uh, is part of what made like uh, uh, the Grand Canyon and so on. 
and uh, that these people were living somewhat on the edge of this uh, during that time. Uh, although the site does go back, um, it tells you here now the science Texas State University researcher Thomas Williams and colleagues working at the Galt site northwest of Austin have dated a significant assemblage of stone artifacts and tools from 16 to 20,000 years of age, pushing back the timeline of the first human inhabitants of North America far before Clovis. Clovis artifacts are distinctive prehistoric stone tools and so named because they were initially found near Clovis, New Mexico in uh, the 1920s. Uh, shortly after that, in about 1928 or 29, this site started being um, developed and uh, they found stuff and uh, Clovis. And so they went down through the Clovis site there. And uh, what's odd about this site is they had had it now for 150 years or more, a site that people could go out and pay and try to do your own digging. Like you can go to places and do your own gold mining, you can go to your place to do your own digging. And they were digging in there and trying to find Clovis points and arrowheads and things like that. And thousands and thousands of them have come out of there. Enough that the, where it, it was going for a good long while. Uh, until I believe in the mid-90s, whenever it was bought out by a different person. And uh, now they're allowing uh, the universities to come in and not just some willy-nilly people. And the neatest thing happened whenever they did this. They actually found that uh, it didn't... Uh, stop at Clovis. Um, they dug a pit down uh, some 50 foot and uh, 40 to 50 foot uh, test pit and when doing so they ran through a Clovis time and then through some 30 more centimeters of sediment and below that 30 centimeters of sediment they found this other culture. So this not predates Clovis by a little bit, but by a large margin, nearly doubling it, actually, it seems. And uh, that's quite the, the change from our current archaeological model. So, um, they're finding, you know, y'all can pause and read this right here, but basically they found that through radiocarbon dating and stimulated luminescence dating that it comes to about 16 to 20,000 years old on an average there. There's a reliable spring that's right near there uh, that's a natural spring and uh, it uh, provided both ample water for humans and wild game during drought and things like that. Um, so apparently people hung out in this area because of this natural spring. It was in an oasis uh, throughout the time that all this was going on. And so not only do we see the Clovis culture here, but then below that you see another culture. And it makes one wonder on many of these sites in North America if they were to go down another level, if they would find another culture. And then that makes one think that if we were to go back in time under other archeological digs, would we find another culture? Uh, the Sumerians were supposedly 3,500 years old uh, and not really that old till they realized that the floor that they were looking at was actually walls that were toppled and then re-flattened out. They dug up under there and they got all the way back to some 7,000 BC, 7,200 BC. And whenever there weren't any walls there at all, but yet there were people still there and the walls that were there weren't there, they go deeper than that and there's still people in that area doing things in primordial people. And so it goes back farther than that. This is you know, how you can get sites back like this, I guess, and see. So, um, so uh, you know, significantly the Galt site excavation provides evidence pushing back earliest human habitation of North America by at least 2,500 years, but it really pushes it back probably some 6,000 years. And that's pretty significant whenever you say that's one third of the time that we're willing to give it. So three, uh, 30 percent longer humans have been here than we thought and grave credit before. And these people have been found right down here in the, in the South Texas area. So uh, I'll try to leave the links up in there to it here, but it's a sign news. And uh, let's look at another article on this. It'll tell you some more. 
Again, what we're looking at here is this Galt site, and uh, it's not too far off a couple of major rivers, but it is in a special spot as far as the topography of Texas and the land goes. As I said before, this was actually all flooded in and up under the ocean at one time here, just, you know, not too, too long ago, uh, some 30,000 years ago, or and longer than that, it was actually uh, drawn uh, up under the water, and most of the area that's down here, and especially you get around in this area here, and there's a lot of coral reefs that go in, and you can see this edging in Edwards Plateau and how it's much higher up and it leads off and the ridge and this galt site is on that ridge and uh, the ocean actually led all the way up here and here into where Dallas is and Dallas actually sits up on an escarpment there so this is the way primordial ocean would have run through here you know today it's way down here at Corpus Christi Bay but uh, at one time Dallas was actually some oceanfront property Here's one of the lead dig men right here on the site, and he's explaining this to a whole bunch of tourists that have came in uh, and what they're doing while it's still going on. And indeed, they came down to an area that's around in here, and this was your Clovis area, and you can see rock and gravel and all through there. But then there's a 30 centimeter gap where there isn't anything, and then down below that, there's an entire other civilization below that. And I really do wonder if there's not in special spaces you know why did people settle there quite often maybe they settled there because they found things pottery shard stuff hey people had been here before this is a good place and or you know they're always choosing places that have a good vantage point that maybe are close to water close to this close to that and it becomes a good place to camp whenever you go out camping you know and a lot of these sites that you go out to don't think that you're the first person that thought that this little clearing right here was a great place to camp because People may have camped there tens, 20,000 years ago now. Another thing they found neat here was evidence of atlatls. And atlatl is a stick that's used to hold on to a spear. And it's used in helping in spear throwing. And they actually had these in that area. Uh, it makes one think of the word atlatl. And if Atlantic has anything to do with the atlatl people, the people that had created all of this message spear point and technology back then and were able to go around and conquer the lands maybe the people of Atlantis weren't quite as advanced or running around as spaceships as some people would like to think but they were just massively more advanced than the others that they ran into here's what appears to be a feathered bird effigy and uh, they can see the feathers and the wings running off of it here and it's blocked off and I don't know if this is a, an early representation of like Quetzalcoatl or something like that, but uh, it shows something like that. And there's also this marking on here that looks like to be a dye or a darkening of the stone. If a mineralogist got a hold of little pieces from here and from here, they might be able to tell if it's been dyed or not. Scratch stones like this that have markings on them. And we don't know if this is like a primordial ideogram, if this is laying out land, if this is some type of thing, but there are many parallel lines here, and this is also done on a diagonal, uh, giving a point of perspective somewhat, uh, which is kind of neat, but uh, we're not sure why this cube has three more scratches in it, those has diagonal lines, why the uh, thing is going on here. This is looked at as being maybe perhaps even a burial um, uh, headrest or a... Uh, something that went along with a burial, although they haven't found human remains, even though they found what looks like burial spots, the human remains have not made it through the time. They weren't preserved like they can get in special areas. Small palm-sized stone that's engraved here with lines that are all symmetrical across it, and then a crisscross hatch of lines some of them through here almost look like a weaving and one would wonder if this is a representation of weaving over and under under over over under over under indeed they're finding clovis style points like this even at depth so it may have to actually redate clovis although it doesn't have the 
center up the middle of it it does have this little cleft in it uh, but also uh, side wings on an arrowhead were looked at as being something that was later and at the end in post clovis although here it's showing up to be something that probably perhaps predates it it's another one here another one here it's slightly larger and probably more of a spear point or something that would have been on the front of that atlatl at the same site too it helps to date that at an age here is a mammoth jaw a juvenile mammoth jaw that apparently they were able to get but uh yeah um so this dates it definitely back in the 13,000 range this carbon dated to that range too and so uh, back before uh, the catastrophe that took away the mammoths and the uh, large you know, fauna that was on North America, uh, the giant cave bear sloths, the horses that were here primordially, saber-toothed tigers, things like that, that all left at that one time, and this shows you it predates that time. Strange carvings on marks, on rocks that almost have a Nazca line appearance to them or something going on with it. No one knows exactly what this is supposed to be or what this is supposed to represent, but uh, people are definitely looking at it quite a bit. It's another look at that little feathered bird thing that's here with his little bird feet, you know? And it's a terrible representation, but at the same time, it's artistic work that looks to be somewhat cro magnon neanderthal -y, uh, type thing of these people that are living in central Texas some 16 to 20,000 years BC. Indeed, you can actually take a tour of this site with a group of people, and that's what we saw in that one video and why somebody had taken a picture of it is that they had gone to this and others went you know, on January 13th through the March 10th, May 12th through July 14th, and September 8th through 10th of November. And that's um, children are free, and I think that's below 12th. Uh, so something neat for them to see perhaps. But then again, it's just going to be a hole in the ground, and they probably won't have an understanding of what they're looking at. Adults that are into archaeology might, and their children might perhaps also. But, uh, yeah, you get to actively see the dig site and the holes that are down there. And there'll be a person telling you about what they found and through their times there and all the different stuff that they have. Indeed, Texas has quite a few anomalies here in the uh, Paleolithic and archaeological world. Uh, there are dinosaur tracks that are coming through uh, Glen Rose site here. As you can see, and there are human tracks that crisscross them. It's quite an amazing anomaly. And there's quite a few different types of dinosaur tracks that are all running through here. And it's not too far from that site. I would say it's probably 100, 120 miles north of there. And uh, here again, set of dinosaur tracks. Dinosaur tracks. Indeed, down here in Texas... Pretty young cowgirls don't mind getting their fingers dirty and they want to learn about archaeology too. And so you have people like Kathleen Turner here that's actually at the dig site. Now what, what I'm showing you here though is that here's the pit that they're going down into. Here's the other side area and then you can see this ladder is set down in the pit and this man's down in the, the pit here and that he's going deeper and deeper and seeing where it all ends and falls out. and they're, not going to believe that just that one hole is the representative of the whole site. They're going to have to do this in quite a few places, but this is the type of thing that's not done in any other sites where they make it to Clovis and they go, there it is, and they go about three inches below it and they go, whoops, don't find any more, and they just stop. Instead of stopping, you dig a pit hole like this through a good site and see if there's something there. Quite often, there is. So along with the Caddo site and a few others that I've shown you here already and uh, the tales of the ones that are down near Austin. Uh, this is another prehistoric site in Texas, but just pointing it out as that would be, you know, just paling what it really is about. Uh, this is the earliest site to find human remains and habitation in all of North America 
and it doesn't look like it sprang up out of nowhere. So again, I wonder if somehow below some of these other sites and on these special places that seem to be great places to live, if there's not other elder civilizations living just below them in time and just below them in the soil. Like, share, and subscribe, guys. Enjoy. More to come.